Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, my last upload was my frame that I played against Ronnie O'Sullivan. So if you haven't seen that video, if you click up here, that'll take you to the full unedited version of that frame. So you can watch that frame in its entirety. Now in this one, I'm gonna look in a bit more detail at the break that Ronnie made. So we're gonna talk about some of the shot selection and some of the key decisions that Ronnie made when he compiled that break. If you're new to the channel, remember to give the video a like, subscribe if you're new. I do regular uploads every single week. That really helps me to just keep all this content coming. So let's get into the video and have a look at this break. Okay, so we'll start the video here with my safety shot. So I'm trying to cover this red here. This is the one that I'm concerned about. This is the one that's right over the corner pocket. Now I'm playing safe off this red here. And what I'm trying to do is bring the white off the red, off the side cushion, and then back up into almost the area where it is now, because that means that I can use the green and the blue, maybe even that red there as cover, so that Ronnie can't get through to that red that's over the pocket there. So I'm trying to catch this red reasonably thin and knock it into that one there to slow it down. And I catch it a little bit too thickly, and that's why the white has landed a bit short and I've left Ronnie with his hand on the table. So can't really afford to leave any player with their hand on the table. And unfortunately here, I'm playing Ronnie O'Sullivan, who you definitely can't afford to leave him with his hand on. So Ronnie, of course, is playing this red here. And what you're really thinking on these shots is you just want to get a really good strike on the white. So if you go bottom and a touch of left-hand side, you'll miss these reds here, and then the side will help you flick round and back out into open play. If you bring it round into open play, you know you'll land it on choice of blue and even yellow, green or brown. So Ronnie gets an excellent strike on that shot there, and you see the white swinging round off three cushions and back out into open play. So he's landed on, as I say, yellow, green or brown, possibly even the blue if he underhits. Now he's got three reds that go here, one, two, and even this red here. So what you're thinking here is, if I pop the yellow, bring the white down, this kind of line, you're just landing in such a big area where you're guaranteed to be on a red. So you're playing for almost three shots in one, and Ronnie's landed nicely on this outside red here. So he's playing that red in the end. And then up for the blue. So you're playing off the cushion, but of stunned left hand side. So I get off that cushion. And yeah. And what's actually happened here is Ronnie's gone a little bit too high. So you actually see Ronnie's face expression there, a little bit disappointed because he's gone a bit too high on the blue. So what players do now, obviously, doesn't really want to go into the pack. There's lots of loose reds, isn't there? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loose reds. So if you play stun to go past the reds here and then use left-hand side, you will flick the white off the two cushions and back out into open play. Without the left-hand side, you wouldn't come back into open play. So get a good strike on the white. Ronnie's just having a think, just planning the line in his mind that he wants the white to take. And then get a bit of almost screw, screw stroke stun with left-hand side back into open play. Now this is an interesting shot here in that Ronnie could possibly play this red here and then get onto the black. But the real problem here in this break is this red, so this one here, is the one that is on the black spot. So you really, in terms of a break, you want to move that red because that's the one that's that's the real key to the break. So it's no good Ronnie here playing onto the black because where does the black respot? That's what he's thinking here. So round off two cushions again, back up for the blue. That then gives you a chance to try and you can potentially play for this red. So if we just pause it a second, so you can potentially play for this red, but unfortunately Ronnie's left this shot a little bit short. Now, there's a fancy shot on this blue to go off the side cushion here with top and right hand side and bring the white round and back into open play. And then you're on this red and this one. But I think Ronnie decides for the slight benefit you would, you would get of going round the table to just play a little stun and just leave this, this red here at a little bit more distance. So again, trying to get a bit of screw. So potting this red, trying to get the top side of the blue. And I'm sure Ronnie's gone in his mind, get this red here. But unfortunately, yep, left it a little bit short again. So this is the importance of... The plan changing all the time when you're building these breaks. Ronnie will definitely have had this red in his mind. 
but he's just not quite getting a chance yet to get to that red. So this is always an interesting shot. He only really got one red he can play for here, which is this one. And the way you're going to get to it is to go off the blue, in between the green and brown, and then use right-hand side to flick yourself off the bulk cushion to the side cushion. And then I'm always talking about going into the line of the red. So because Ronnie is coming into the line of this red, he's got a large amount of space to land good. So as long as he avoids that green and brown, so just misses the green, get, you see the white kick off with the right-hand side, and then he's down onto this red. So now, as I say, maybe probably a bit of a change of plan here, but all of a sudden spots, okay, I can immediately now move this red. So if Ronnie pots this red here, he can send the white into this red and then knock that red away from the black spot, so knock that red over there and then leave the white on the black. So that is the real key then to this frame. So pots that red, knocks that red away from the black spot and that's an excellent shot there getting that black in play now so now he can play a screw shot leave the red in the same pocket and all of a sudden now we've got a great chance to score so that's what you're looking for as a snooker player get things in the positions that you're that feel comfortable and they're the shots that you should practice a lot so around the black spot it's the stuff that snooker players work on to build bigger breaks now as well as thinking ahead and the bit of a plan that we've just been talking about here you're also looking at problems now Ronnie's looking at this red here as a problem again because it's stopping the black from potting into this corner pocket here. So straight away, he'll take the opportunity here to just stop the white. So stun shot, stop that white. And now once this red is moved, the black is now available into both corner pockets. So it's a great choice to get that, to get that red out of the way. Now everything is open. Now, another key decision here, and I'm always talking about this when you break build, Ronnie has got this red, this red here, as an insurance here. So he wants to go into the reds, so he'd love to screw the white into these reds, because after this loose red, there's no more to go for anyway. This one's closer to the cushion. So you always go into the pack of reds. So you're going in off the black and trying to almost screw off them, knowing that, worst case scenario, you've got this red as a backup. So down into the shot, trying to get some extra screw on so that when the white hits the pack, it screws off them, and that's worked out quite nicely. So Ronnie has got the red that we said he, he'd got as the backup, and as it happens, this one is about to bounce and land over the middle. So that's landed over the middle. So Ronnie can now just play a hold shot here. So get that bite on the white, that's it, and now he's nicely on the blue. So little stun shot, play for both of these reds here. So you can just play into a, a nice area again where you've got two reds to land on. So he's landed perfectly on this outside one. Now if you just play this as a roll shot, no need to complicate it. Yep, just play it as a nice little rolling shot. And that just keeps everything in within ease without risking playing any stun run through shots. That's putting timing into the shot and it makes things complicated. Now... You'd see Ronnie do this a lot on the TV, that he can play for this loose red, that's it in open play. This one, you can almost play for as a bonus. So it's nice to play off the cushion here, so screw back off the black, leave the white over in this direction, and then you're leaving this red into this middle pocket over here. So Ronnie takes the opportunity, you'll see this a lot in his break building, and almost playing on bonus shots. So if you, like I say, screw into that area, you're always guaranteed to be on this red here anyway. But he's just removed another loose one now. So now this is a nice shot. Just float the black, touch of right hand side off the cushion. Just keep away from that red. And you are just playing on one red there. So now, yeah. Yeah, plays nicely high on the black. And now he can move this last awkward red here so a nice little soft screw shot onto that last awkward red just want any angle so you can get back out onto the black which he gets nicely and i think ronnie actually chooses here he screws for the the black in the same pocket so there's a nice little angle and now a soft screw for the red in the same pocket that he's potting the black 
always leaving angles. Ronnie's always playing high there, so you're trying to get up the table in this direction. If you finish too low on this red, then it means you've got to start going up for the blue or bulk colour. So you're always trying to get high so you can easily get to the black again. So rolling through, leaving a perfect angle again here. And now Ronnie's just looking whether both these reds go. And actually, interestingly, if we just zoom in, this red is actually tied up by the pink. It's a, a bit annoying. So what you would do here as a player is you're trying to get onto this red but if you don't land on it quite straight, it means you can give this other red a bit of a nudge. So you may as well play low on this red. So you may as well play the white low so that you can pot this red and in potting it, cannon the white into this other one. If you land on it too straight and you don't get that opportunity, you can always just play back to the black again and play the cannon later. So you're giving yourself two chances to bring the, the red into play. So Ronnie does exactly that, tries to play a little bit low. And I think he does land, he's just checking, but he does land absolutely perfectly to just nudge the other red out. So he had to put a bit of stun on just to widen it. But that was, like I say, almost two chances to get that red in play. If he hadn't have landed a bit low, you can try it next time on the, on the other black. So screwing in behind this red. Now this is, as I always say, if you don't need the points, don't play for the black off the final red. It is much easier to get to the yellow from either the blue or one of the other bulk colours. So Ronnie here just on this red screws back for the blue. The, definitely the easiest way there and the crowd enjoyed that. That was a century but that was the easiest way to get to the blue which makes it nice and comfortable to get to the yellow. So this is just a standard colours clearance there. So Ronnie nicely on the yellow stun run through off the cushion there and when you land a little bit low here so he's landed a bit straight on the green so if we just look at the line here it's almost like a little bit straight Ronnie actually just chooses to screw back anywhere here into this part of the table and as a right handed player you can reach the brown into the same pocket so little screw back shot and then you can reach for the brown this is top with a bit of left hand side again so you come off one two so if we just quickly look at that shot so this shot on the brown do we get a good look no we don't get much of a look because Ronnie gets straight down but the natural path of the white without left hand side would be to take the white off this bulk cushion and then very close to the side cushion but if you play side spin you can send it off here and then send it a lot wider off this cushion and back here into open play so Ronnie plays, rolling it in, touch the left-hand side, you see the white swing a little bit wide there. Standard shot here that the pros play off this cushion. Bit of right-hand side, so check the white up, keep it away from the cushion. Without the side, the white would have ended up over there. So you could just roll this in and just leave the, the black into the opposite pocket, but Ronnie, because obviously the frame is already won, just plays the black in the same pocket and then just hits this. Bit of an exhibition shot. So I love doing those break building videos because I really think it gives you a nice insight into what these professional players are thinking. It's also great for your own game, so I always say that even if you're thinking, well, I can't make these big breaks like Ronnie O'Sullivan can, well, you can still pick up some tips and it just gives you an idea of some of the things that players are thinking when they're compiling those breaks. So even if you're trying to get up to 30 break standard, 40 break standard, you can still use some of the tips that we talked about in this video. As always, if you did enjoy the video, remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, that just really helps me to keep these videos coming regularly. And if anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, feel free to look in the description box below, send me a message, and I'd love to help you personally with your game. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.